Hello students, and welcome to this lesson on the transformation of exponential functions. Our objective today is that we will analyze transformations of exponential functions using journal notes and practice problems. So before we get started, we have to talk about transformations again. Remember, transformations are where we take the graph and we just move it around um, according to the equation. So we're analyzing an equation and we're saying, OK, well, how will this affect the graph and trying to find rules that we can follow? Unfortunately, our exponential function is going to follow a different set of rules than most of our functions. So while these are still transformations, they're going to have a little bit different names, um, and they're, they're not quite the same as the transformations that we've learned before. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is actually learn the parent function. So the parent function for one of these is going to be f of x is equal to b of x, where b is the base. And b must be greater than 0, and b cannot equal 1. So uh, these conditions are pretty sensible. Uh, b being negative would cause us a lot of issues. That's actually a completely different family of functions that you guys will learn in pre-calculus. However, b being equal to 1 would cause this problem. So if I take 1 to the x power, well, 1 to the x power, 1 to the 1 power is equal to 1 to the second power, which is equal to 1 to the third power, and so on and so forth. So that's why we cannot use 1 to the x power. So it's any, x, it's any function which has a base of b greater than 0, not equal to 1, where you have this exponent up here. So that's our parent function. All right, now let's talk about our translations. So translations are things that move up, down, left, and right. So what we'll see is that our vertical shift is still in the same position. So it's called something different. It used to be called h and k, right? This would have been a k value here, the d. However, now it's going to be called d because it does something very slightly different. So if we have a d here, so if d is greater than 0, then the function will shift up. absolute value d units. And if d is less than 0, it's going to shift down. d units. So that one is actually exactly the same as our k. So uh, d acts the same way that k would have, where if d is positive, then it's going to shift up, and if d is negative, then it's going to shift down. All right, and here, if we have c is positive, we notice that this translation, x minus c. Well, if we're thinking about the arguments, this is very similar to h, right? So I might say that this is similar to h. Um, so we'll see that if h is positive, and h is negative, sorry, this is going to be c is positive and c is negative, then it's going to shift to the right. And again, c is analogous to h. So what we're saying here is if c is a positive number, we maintain our sign here. We maintain the negative sign. So if you see something that's like x minus um, some number, then that means that c is positive. Finally, we have our a values. So if a is greater than 1, then it's going to be a vertical stretch. If 0 is less than a, which is less than 1, then it's going to be a vertical compression. So this actually does the exact same thing as our a value did in our previous transformations. And finally, if we have that a itself is less than 0, 
then it's going to cause a reflection over the x-axis. And all of these are very familiar transformations. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples um, detailing each of these different transformations in a few different functions. All right, so example one. And we're going to have 12 examples here. So if you want to go ahead and grid that out, that'll be OK. And then continue the video. All right, so for example one, we have 3 times 2 to the x power. Well, 2 to the x power, um, 2 to the 0 power is obviously 1. So we can plot that point. However, we see that we have this stretch that's occurred. So these are a to the x examples. So we're going from 0, 1 to 0, 3. And this is also just like how we change our starting value. So now we go to 2 to the first power. Well, 2 to the first power is 2. So my next point, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, will be multiple, multiplied by 3, and it'll be up here. Um, we have 2 to the negative 1 power. That's going to be 1 half. That multiplied by 3 will give me 1 and a half, and we'll see this shape emerge here. So my original function would have looked a little bit like this. And now we see that it has kind of moved up and stretched a little bit. So that's going to be a vertical stretch. And we also saw that the starting value went from zero, 1 to zero, 3. So vertically stretching caused our starting value to go from zero, 1 to zero, 3. All right, so now let's look at our next function. So now my a value is negative 1 third. So my original function would have looked a little bit like this again. And I'd have this nice shape here. And let's see what the transformations do to my function. So one third. So all of my points are going to be one third of their original value. So now, instead of one, it's going to be one third. Instead of two, it's going to be two thirds. Instead of four, it's going to be four thirds. Um, additionally, we have this negative here, and that negative is going to cause us to flip over my horizontal axis. All right, so let's see. 1 becomes 1 third, and it's going to flip over the axis. And then 2 becomes 2 thirds, and that's going to also go over the axis. Then 4 is going to become 4 over 3. And what we see is that we have a much gentler incline now. It's still going to be an increasing function, but it's a much gentler curve than my previous curve was. All right, so let's start talk about the starting value. So my starting value went from Zero, 1 to 0, negative 1 third. And we see that now we are going to be a decreasing function as well. So we have performed a horizontal flip or a reflection. All right, now let's look at something with a little bit of a different base. So again, we have um, a starting value of our original function would be 0, 1, 10 to the 0 power would be 1. However, immediately we jump straight up. So we are going all the way up to 1, 10 because it's 10 to the first power, which is 10. So I'm going to go ahead and scale this in terms of, I'm going to change this right here. And I'm going to scale this where every two lines is going to be 10. So this will be 10, this will be 20, this will be 30. So 
and we immediately jump up to 10. And then from 10, we're going to go all the way up to 100. So we see that this is an extremely fast increasing function. So that's my parent function here. That's with my base being 10. Now, if we take that and we're going to um, now create a transformation of it using this a value, uh, this would become 5. So our starting value becomes 5, which is almost too small. And actually, it's going to be 1 half. So now our starting value is 0, 1 half. Uh, our second point will occur at 1, 5. Our third point will be at 50, uh, 2, 50. So we'll just increase that function there. It's going to still have a pretty high curve, but it's just going to follow along with that other curve. All right, so my new starting value went from 0, 1 to now it's going to be 0, 1 half. So again, we're seeing that pattern with A, where A, the starting value, will oftentimes control uh, what your y-intercept is. All right, then finally, let's do this last function. I'm going to just go ahead and graph those first couple of points, just to give us an idea of what we're working with. Remember, this function will go up extremely quickly. And now we're going to see that it's going to be multiplied by 2, uh, by negative 2. So not only are we doubling the value of each point, we're going to be reflecting it across this x-axis. All right, so this goes from 10 to now 20. And we see that this jump is extremely quick. So this function is going to just increase incredibly quickly. So my new starting value, it went from... 0, 1, to now 0, negative 2. All right, so now let's look at f of x plus d. And I'm just going to do examples 5 and 6 here. So go ahead and you can ignore examples um, 7 and 8. I think that you guys will get the picture on, on these. So we're going to do 5 and 6, and then on the next page we're going to do um, 10 and 11. So these functions, we have 2 to the x, so we have this starting point here. But then we're shifting every point up 3. So we go from 0, 1 to 0, 4. And then here we have 1, 2. And that's going to get shifted up. Again, 3, 1, 2, 3. And we're going to make a copy of our function that is now a little bit higher. And what's interesting here is that our asymptote will move with us when we do this. So when we have a transformation like this, our asymptote will move with us. So not only did our starting value change, but our asymptote will also change by the same amount. So our asymptote is going to go up 3. So it's now the line y is equal to 3. And my starting value went from 0, 1 to 0, 4. So that's the important difference here, is that your, uh, your up and down transformation, your D, is going to actually change your asymptote as well as your uh, starting value. And we'll see that a negative shift will do the same thing, except we're going down now. So we start at 0, 1. We have our asymptote here, and we shift down 1. Sorry, this is going to be down 2 because it's minus 2. So we shift our point down 2 and our asymptote down 2, and then all of our other points will follow. So we go from here to down 2, 1, 2. So now we have a point here. So now my asymptote is going to be y is equal to negative 2, and my starting value went from 0, 1 to now it's going to be 0, comma, negative 1. And an interesting thing has occurred here. I now have an x-intercept. 
at 1, comma, 0. So we've created a little bit more um, information here. And then finally, our C value is going to shift our function left and right. So our original function um, is 2 to the x. And now we see that we have a x minus 4 here. So we know that C is positive. Therefore, we're going to shift to the right. So we're going to shift our entire function to the right four units. So instead of having this point here, 0, 1, it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4. It'll be over here. And what we'll see is that our starting value will go from 0, 1 to 0, comma, 1 over 1 16th. And then the same thing will, look at, will happen if c is negative. Except now we're going to move to the left. So we go from 0, 1, 2. We're going to move two units to the left, 1, 2. And what we'll see is that um, our points, so this would have been 1, 2, and this would have been 2, 4. So now our new intercept here is going to be through the point 0, 4. So we went from 0, 1 to 0, 4. And we see that our, our asymptote has not changed. So that's an important difference between C and D, is that C will not change your asymptote. All right, it's been a, it's been a long video, so let's go ahead and move on to our reflection. So your reflection is how are transformations of exponential functions different from previous functions? Uh, specifically when we're talking about the points, uh, we aren't using h and k anymore, right? And what is our reason that we're no longer using h and k? So think about that a little bit. Um, write a sentence or two about it, and then go ahead and show me for the stamp. Your assignment is to work on your worksheet 7-2, Exponential Transformations. Uh, tomorrow we're going to continue and talk about exponential regression and actually creating a graph given some data points. All right, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.